Hi, everybody. My name is Crystal Collinsworth. How are you? I, um, I ended up in uh, the HD community um, back in 2013, I guess. I had a, uh, my grandmother on my father's side uh, was diagnosed with Huntington's disease and passed away in 2009. And in 2007, my daddy was diagnosed with Huntington's and uh, he was forced to retire um, as a police officer. And um, I lost him to suicide in June of 2013. So um, in a four year period, I lost both of them. And I had never heard of Huntington's disease. I had absolutely no idea what it was. And I still wasn't very educated when um, my dad was diagnosed or even when my daddy passed. And, um, you know, that's been one of my biggest regrets is that I wished that I had, um, at that time, I was a business owner and very busy with life and, you know, had girls that were still in high school and stuff. And I just, I didn't take the time to educate myself on it. And the two of them had completely different symptoms. Uh, my grandmother, um, she got more of the, the physical decline in the Korea. Daddy got the, uh, the depression and the anger side of HD. So when I started seeing symptoms in my dad, I did not recognize them as Huntington's disease because that's not what I saw in my grandmother. I thought maybe he was just depressed. I didn't, I didn't see it. So when, uh, when he started declining, I, um, I was actually in Florida uh, with some friends of mine and I was going through a uh, three month class and my dad declined while I was gone. And uh, my family lives in Northern Kentucky. So when he started declining, my daughter, you know, got a hold of me and my sister telling me that, you know, daddy's behavior was just, um, he wasn't himself. So I booked a flight to come home for a little while and stay with him just to kind of get an idea of what was going on. And the day that I was supposed to be in Kentucky, um, I got detoured uh, about an hour out of the way and I missed my flight that day. And um At 4, 4.24 that afternoon, I got a phone call from um, a friend of mine. It was the worst day of my life. It, it really was. I was standing in the front yard with a phone in each hand, you know, talking to friends and family on one phone and the state police on the other phone. And I've never felt so helpless in my life. That started me on my quest um, of... Um, becoming an advocate for suicide prevention and for Huntington's disease and JHD, trying to do everything that I can possibly do to spread awareness and particip participate in events. And, you know, it's been nine years since I almost 10. I'm like, wow, it'll be 10 years in June this year. And in about six months after dad died, um, the trauma from his suicide triggered a lot of the dormant things in my body. Um, so I started getting really sick. And before I knew it, I had a team of doctors and autoimmune diseases, connective tissue disorder, and I was seeing a neurologist at the time, but he didn't want to test me. He uh, said, Crystal, you know, there's no way you have Huntington's disease. You don't look like someone with Huntington's. You don't show any signs of that. And at that time, he diagnosed me with clinical depression. I think that was in 2014. And he really wanted me to just take the time to grieve. And um, I immediately got into um, suicide prevention support groups. And um, 
started in a support group with HDSA, I believe. And um, some things started happening with my health that none of my other doctors could figure out. And they thought, you know, the, the last resort was to go back to my neurologist and get tested. And so that's what I did. And I was married at the time went in and sat down, you know, with my team of people and talked to everybody, went through the testing, decided to get the blood test done. And a month later, I went back to, it was UC Neurology, Dr. Duker. He is just amazing over there. Me and my husband went in and um, I met with the same team of amazing people. Dr. Duker said, Crystal, we didn't get the result that we thought we were going to because they thought for sure that I didn't have it too. Um, my sister had already been tested and tested negative. And, you know, that left me. And so um, I tested positive on May 3rd, 2017. And I know, you know, there's the, uh, I, there's a number associated with it. And I asked him what my number was and he said 41. And, um, you know, I handled it a lot better than I thought I was going to. And I've handled it a lot better, you know, over the past six years. You know, but I finally, uh, I finally hit my breaking point this past weekend. And um, I've known all of this time, you know, even though I've been an advocate for, you know, I've been heavily involved with Help for HD International and um, have attended, you know, symposiums and um, hype events and actually got a trophy a couple of years ago for person of the year. And I participate in um, Out of the Darkness Walks for American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. But all of this time felt like that there was just something I needed to be doing. I needed to be a part of something bigger. And so when I came back from Nashville last year for the um, Help for HD Symposium, um, uh, my boyfriend, was talking to me and you know I I lived with the fear that if I got too heavily involved with HD that I was really really going to have to look at my own disease and that was something that I was just terrified to do and you know but it's it's that time and my boyfriend was talking to me about, you know, you know, what do you really want to be doing? You know, what, what do you want to be doing where Huntington's disease is involved? And I wanted to start my own nonprofit. And so I started that journey uh, at the end of October last year. And it's called the Wishing Tree for HD. And I have this beautiful fascination with trees I always have. and um, you know, there are our JHD community, you know, that's the, that's the most heartbreaking part of it. You know, all of these kids that are, that are, that are dying from this disease that there is absolutely no cure for. And even though the, there are clinical trials on the horizon and, you know, some of them look promising and we do have, you know, some new things that have come into place with the FDA. Um, but I really just wanted to to get more involved. And so we are still in the beginning phases of it. And um, our website is um, the wishing tree for hd.com. And so you check out the website. I'm constantly updating it. We're, and um, we're getting our events set up for this year. Um, <clears throat> we're raising money this year mostly to pay for our events that are coming up and we're getting ready to do a cookie fundraiser. And then we have um, four board members who are, one of them is my daughter, Lisa Hornback. Um, Trisha Went is another board member, Heather Cottle and um, Melissa Miller. Those are the four females that are on board with me. And um, my daughter's gonna be doing a booty, it's a booty yoga 
it's more of a, it's a beautiful yoga, very tribal. And she's going to be doing booty for HD once a month um, to, to raise money. And we also are going to be participating in Hippie Fest in Hocking Hills, August 12th and 13th. Um, it's up by, um, it's in Logan, Ohio. And um, it is a lot, all kinds of different art. And I actually have participated in it personally um, with photography and things of that nature. So all the proceeds are going to go to the wishing tree from that. And then we're also going to do... Um, an art extravaganza at Serenity Jam. And it's in September. It's in Cincinnati at Season Good Pavilion. Sorry, I'm looking for the, the details of it. And I'm going to update the website tonight. So all of that will be on there too. And we're going to do a Halloween for HD. And um, we are still waiting on a few. Um, you know, the paperwork for nonprofit is just unbelievable. And so we have um, our attorney is, is working on that. And, um, you know, that's, that's where we are with it. And um, that's how I ended up becoming involved with, with HD. You know, I have tried to have a positive mindset, you know, where this d disease is concerned and have tried to, uh, do the best that I can. You know, I've seen both sides of the disease. I've seen, you know, the the better end of it, and I've seen the worst case scenario, and I know what it looks like. So I'm going to do everything that I can to keep raising awareness and getting the word out and getting the community involved and um, hooking up with other nonprofit agents that have really, really been helping. The, there's other nonprofit organizations that have really um, helped me get things up and running and have given me ideas and steered me in the right direction. And um, Shelby with um, Champions for HD and um, Katie and Katrina, I've reached out to them a couple of times, Help for HD International, and I just love them. And I'll continue to be as involved with their events as humanly possible. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. We're just gonna keep building and keep building and going forward. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I do, so for your Halloween for Huntington's disease, what do you think on doing for that one? We are going to do, um, we're going to have a um, costume. We're also going to do a, um, let me answer your question first. We're going to do um, pumpkin painting and we're going to have music. We're going to do a, it's going to be family friendly. So HD, JHD, and we're still working on um, location and an exact date but we're going to um, have a DJ and I really want to do some, some really fun finger foods. Um, and I think that's gonna, it's, I love Halloween. It's my favorite. So I want to really, really go big with it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Awesome. And so for the wishing tree for HD, um, is it going to be helping other people, um, the funds? Yep, that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, I know that getting through the first year, uh, one of the board members um, is helping me um, with grant writing. So while we're getting through that process, this year the funds are, are mostly going to go to paying for our events this year. Um, but going forward, you know, our funds are going to be going to families. Um, who are affected by HD or JHD with, you know, whatever the need may be, whether it is um, prescriptions or health equipment or um, utilities and rent, you know, things like that. Um, that's what, that's what we're going to, I'm trying to get my events page to come up so I can give you more details about the Halloween event. 
And if and anyone else has questions, don't forget to unmute yourself. Did I miss that much for 15 minutes where you guys are already talking about parties? <laughs> you did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Allison, having major issues with Allison. Sorry. Oh. So for the Halloween, we're going to do costume contest, split the pots. Um, we're going to do a wishing tree t-shirt sale going to have raffle items, um, music and DJ. And uh, October 7th, it's on a Saturday, is the date that I tentatively have it planned for. Um, the booty yoga with Lisa, booty yoga for HD is going to be um, at Empower Studio in Ludlow, Kentucky. Um, Christy Sloan is the owner there, and my daughter is a certified booty yoga instructor, and Christy has been gracious enough to lend us space in her studio to do that once a month, and that will begin in April. Then we are going to have a walking for wishes in the 70s is what we're calling it. We're going to do that um, in May of this year and have everybody dress in their best 70s attire and join us in a 5K walk or, you know, dance if you like. We'll have music and raffle items, split the pots. We'll have our t-shirt sale. We're gonna have um, an education table set up. We'll do beads and necklaces, face painting, and then we'll also do prizes for um, best dressed. And I can't wait for that. I think that's really gonna be a blast. Sorry, I was a little bit late getting in the meeting today, but where are you from? Where do you live? Um, I, Florence, Kentucky. Okay. All right. Thanks. That's yeah. not near the blue people, are they? What's that? They're not near the blue people, are they? The blue people? Kayla knows this. So I found <laughs> an article about Kentucky that they actually had blue people in the eastern part of Kentucky. And the guy, they called the guy Papa Smurf because when they took the picture of him, he was his skin was completely blue with white hair. You know, I think, I don't know why I, I just got a visual of that, but I can't, I can't recall it. Yeah. So I'm going to have to answer that with no, but I am going to look <laughs> it up. <laughs> I sent that over to Kayla. Because because uh, because you're near Kentucky, and I found I'm like, oh, this is just hilarious. I'm gonna have to look that up. That'd be funny. Mm -hmm. But um, you know the the thing is is that we have to find a cure for this disease, and this is how we do it is by you know coming together. I don't. I don't care, you know, who is with what organization be because we're a family regardless. And, you know, we have to pull together pull and, you know, share resources and figure out, you know, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Thank you so much for joining us, Crystal. You know what? I thank you so much for having me with you. It really means a lot. You know, it's a uh, my daughter posted something the other day that said, when you can't get rid of the fear of something, sometimes you have to do it afraid. And, you know, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing some days is just trying to walk through the fear of, you know, I, uh, it's not even about being successful. It's about, you know, community and using our voices and using my voice while I can to raise awareness and you know, to make a difference in the lives of, you know, the kids that are affected by JHD and, you know, to be fully present in this community and trying to raise awareness. And, you know, I, I want everybody to know that they can, you know, there's contact information on the website. We have our Facebook page and um, reach out anytime, you know, and I mean that.
I realized this past weekend how much of my diagnosis that I hadn't actually dealt with wholeheartedly. And I spent so much time <clears throat> trying to support other people and be there for others. I realized after almost six years after my diagnosis that I hadn't really dealt with my own. And I finally, you know, I found my breaking point this past Friday and it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And, you know, so I'm taking, I'm taking that time and I have found a new level of understanding and compassion when it comes to this disease. And you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna work as hard as I possibly can. And I love you, Kayla. And I thank you so much for, for having me on here with you all. What's your face? I Facebook love you page? and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Sorry, I didn't um, to What's your Facebook page? 